This is KGW News at 5. But I'm here to tell you, even more Oregonians are going to become infected with COVID-19 if we do not change course right now. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday evening. And first at five, a stark warning from Governor Kate Brown as Oregon reports its highest number of daily COVID-19 cases yet. The state announced 1,122 new cases and four more deaths. This is the first time we've topped 1,000 cases in a single day. And you can see on this graph, it continues the spike we've been seeing since the beginning of November. The Oregon Health Authority says a portion of this week's cases stem from at least five Halloween events. That includes small gatherings and a party with more than 100 people. With those record numbers, health experts warn you're more likely to catch COVID-19 from a close family member or friend than from anyone else. That's why groups are trying to help families be safe caretakers. Galen Etlin shows us how. A tent inside might seem strange, but in the pandemic, it's another tool to help families care for a COVID patient. Isolate the sick person as much as possible. Dr. Kim Rep is Washington County's chief epidemiologist. In this video from the county, she says a room away from everyone else is ideal, but there are other ways to reduce risk from airborne particles. You remember when we were kids and we'd build forts, right? So you can build basically a fort inside a room where the sick person can sleep, and that will even reduce some of the droplet transmission from coughing and breathing. More than 40% of Washington County's cases are caught at home. That number goes up to 50% of cases among the Latinx community. That's why the county is reaching out in Spanish to educate Latinx families about household transmission. One size does not fit all. Daniel Altamirano Hernandez works with the group Centro Cultural, helping Washington County reach Latinx people. It's extremely important now more than ever. I think due to our multi-generational homes that are very prevalent in our community. The state says Hispanic people make up 13 percent of Oregon's population, but are disproportionately impacted from COVID-19, making up 42 percent of cases. We continue to be really concerned with the numbers. Veronica Leonard with Latino Network says free testing events and outreach are still tough, with many Latinx families afraid of public systems or of losing their jobs. She works to debunk those myths and prevent more spread. How can we continue to be in family without putting our families at risk? If someone is sick, Washington County says everyone in the house should wear a mask and face shield, keep surfaces clean, and try to increase ventilation by opening windows. But ultimately, you should only choose one person to be the caregiver for the sick person. Reduce contact to reduce spread. I'm Galen Etlin for KGW News. With Thanksgiving just two weeks away from today, public health officials worry the holiday centered on gatherings will just spread COVID even more. Morgan Romero shares some ideas about how to celebrate safely. In most places, a surge in coronavirus cases can mostly be blamed on social get togethers. In fact, Canada had their Thanksgiving last month and then saw a huge spike in cases. We may have to make sacrifices this year. For many, that means staying home, and not traveling. Fortunately, though, we have some guidance to look to from the CDC to go along with any local or state health laws. I think each family is going to have to make a risk assessment about what the risk and benefit of what we all feel is such an important tradition. Some low risk things the CDC suggests you do for the holiday have a small dinner with people you live with. Host a virtual dinner and share recipes with friends and family. That's what Dr. Fauci says he'll do. Watch sports, parades, and movies from home. Things considered moderate risk. Hosting a small outdoor dinner with friends and family who live in your area. And visiting pumpkin patches or orchards where they enforce social distancing, masks, and hygiene. Well, a lot of the usual things we do around Thanksgiving are risky like going shopping in crowded stores, going to parades, and going to big gatherings inside with people you don't live with. But if you're still planning to host Thanksgiving regardless, the CDC asks you to start quarantining now and ask your guests to do the same. Do your dinner outside and limit guests. Encourage everyone to wear masks and use hand sanitizer. And tell the host and other guests ASAP if you feel sick or test positive after Thanksgiving. And as always, quarantine. 
Thanksgiving in our country revolves around food and around sharing food. So to avoid spreading germs, like we always say, wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. And instead of a potluck, encourage people to bring their own food and drinks. Wear a mask while preparing food or serving people. Use single-use plates and silverware or just have one person serving it up. A lot of families this year will scale down the traditional turkey dinner. Instead... They'll support struggling local restaurants doing takeout. Many Portland restaurants want and need your businesses. Staples like Paley's Place and Higgins are offering Thanksgiving to-go and meal kits. You do need to get those orders in soon, though, because a lot of places have cutoff dates. In the newsroom, Morgan Romero, KGW News. In Washington, Governor Inslee is expected to urge people to change their Thanksgiving plans as COVID cases rise. He is speaking in a direct address at 530 this evening. Inslee's office says he will not announce new COVID restrictions, though. We will update you with what he says. You can also watch it live on KGW.com. Again, that is at 530. This graph shows more people are going to the hospital for COVID-19. There are now 303 Oregonians hospitalized. That's up from 290 yesterday. To help make space for those patients, several hospitals in our area have started to postpone some elective surgeries. According to the Oregonian, that includes Legacy Health, OHSU, and Kaiser Permanente Northwest. Unlike in the spring, when Governor Kate Brown ordered elective procedures to stop, this is voluntary. Providence and Peace Health say they haven't made any decisions to limit surgeries yet. With so many new cases identified in Multnomah County and elsewhere, it's a real challenge for contact tracers to keep up. As of two days ago, 79% of the new cases in Oregon could not be traced to a single source. So I think right, right, we're at a moment now where we're transitioning from that um, sort of search, you know, search, search and find and wall off with the, you know, cases and contact tracing piece. We're sort of transitioning now to a broader community level intervention to try to get virus spread down, keep our hospitals running. But Dr. Vine says contact tracers are also valuable because they help people find places where they can safely quarantine and get them services if they need them. Now to a tragic reminder of the realities of our homeless crisis. A homeless man and double amputee died on a sidewalk in Bend this week. Officials say the cold, windy weather appears to be the primary cause, along with the fact that Bend does not have enough shelter beds. Many people knew Dave and tried to help, including a woman who started a GoFundMe to get him a hotel room. But she says hotels wouldn't take him because he didn't have an ID. The morning that I got news of his passing, um, I cried. It hurt to know that he was out there and we were trying to get him the help that he needed and it was just too late. Multnomah County is also struggling with shelter space this winter. With the pandemic, cramming people into crowded rooms is just no longer an option. We'll have an update on the push to get more shelter beds coming up here at 6 o'clock on The Story with Dan Haggerty. Hey, he violently attacked us and I don't know why. A frightening night for a Forest Grove family. They woke to a belligerent man trying to break down their door then learned the suspect was an off-duty police officer. That officer has now been relieved of his official duties as authorities investigate. But as Mike Benner reports, the victims want him fired. It was horrible. Halloween has passed, but memories of what happened early that morning outside this Forest Grove home still haunt Mireya Castaneda. I've never been so frightened, never had someone attack, come at us, attack like this with such rage and violence like this individual did. The 39-year-old wife and mother of four was awakened by some commotion in the early morning hours of Halloween. She and her husband went to check it out, and they found a stranger who appeared drunk on their property. The guy gets to my door, starts pounding on it, starts kicking it, starts trying to open it, just going nuts, you know, just going nuts. He starts um, just breaking everything that's there on my porch. I had some decorations, plus the Halloween decorations we had just set out. Set out. Mireya called 911. Responding officers found the guy not too far away. Relief, right? Think again. Mireya's daughter is so scared she won't sleep alone now. And her son? He was sleeping with a knife right next to him. 
like where his pillow was and that was extremely just that was tough that was hard even harder is who the suspect turned out to be an off-duty officer with the forest grove police department disheartening i have family members i have friends who are police officers at one point, I'm on the phone with one of them and I'm crying. I'm bawling. Stephen Teets was cited for criminal mischief, but never booked into jail due to COVID-19 restrictions. The 43-year-old's been taken off the streets and put on desk duty as deputies with the Washington County Sheriff's Office investigate the case. What would have happened if he would have actually got me? Uh, no, there's no way this man can be a police officer. Mireo wants to see Teets fired. She believes he targeted her home because of the Black Lives Matter flag that hangs outside. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in my mind. It was the flag. While the motive remains unclear, this much is clear. I want accountability and I want to know the truth. I want to know the truth. I want to know what happened. Mireya Castaneda went ahead and filed a lawsuit against Stephen Teets. His attorney tells us that Teets is a 10-year Army veteran who is dealing with a personal issue, and he deserves understanding and support and not condemnation. In the meantime, the chief of police in Forest Grove released a statement on Facebook saying that the city takes personnel matters like this very seriously. He has requested an outside, independent investigation of the department's handling of this incident. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News.